Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave with another late day wrap up of which we will be discussing, of course, all the major indices in the U.S. markets and do a little bit of Dixie action as well and follow up on Bitcoin here too. So with that said, I want to wish you the best, best and the haps, the happiest. And of course, a little reminder for if you are new to the series, it's more like very fast, short term and some sometimes a little bit of long term analysis as well, but more or less just kind of trying to get it out. Bang, bang. Anyways, with that said, we'll start off with Dixie as always to get the bias on everything that's kind of against the dollar. And of course, for the Forex traders out there, very much relevant. And I am still looking at this as a reversal. Uh, not just uh, confirmed, but in progress now, as it does get its second consecutive close above the 21 exponential mean average on the weekly, now having a positive slope. And I would be looking at that as a bit, little bit of a base of price action, meaning that that $91.5 region will very likely become a bit of a base and a major pivot here, meaning that as long as Dixie is above it, I am more or less bullish on it on the macro. And here's the thing, anytime that we have seen about a three month long basing formation, of which we certainly did see right here, which, uh, which essentially does denote a bit of a macro low, it usually does not just have well actually in fact it doesn't usually it has never in the history that we have here about uh, 30 years now uh, come down after just you know one little up move in fact as you can see over here on the last macro low in 2018 took about uh till 2020 actually before the reversal did inevitably happen of course the time before that was way the fuck back on over here in 2011 2008 and 95 and 90 and we don't need to go through this million goddamn times because i'm probably boring the shit out of you with that as it's been repeated ad nauseum but more importantly i still do look at this as a reversal in progress and very likely to lead it uh lead it into the monthly closure as well of which we do see momentum also is turning in favor of the upside here too monthly still nice and well some trying to cross the upside and monthly rsi having a bit of hidden bullish evidence very much uh likely to be confirmed at the end of this month with any sort of a any sort of a closure here or higher actually and that will very likely produce targets back up to about 94 bucks long term but of course because this is a monthly you know that is long term so we're talking about you know three four months down the road but all that does look good for further continuation uh what about the short term time frames like a daily in this case i'd actually be looking for the daily to probably rally back up towards the 92 and a half dollar region uh more short and medium term actually uh this one still looks like it is more or less bullish here and I really have no reason to be bearish on it uh, again as long as above that 91 and a half dollar pivot so if you are trading forex and you are trading against the dollar well I would be more or less having a general bullish bias with the dollar not always of course it, there is there's a lot of exotic pairs out there in the world but that is uh you know that is going to be the general sort of uh, bias here anyways moving on to traditional markets let's go see what the big three are doing here start off with uh, Dow Jones as that has been the leader of the pack for the more recent price action and again last week's closure I still do look at this is more or less good here more or less likely to be getting new all-time highs after a little bit of a short-term pullback the question is have we already seen that short-term pullback here well let's go down to a lower term time from like the four hour and i do think that we have seen at the very least a nice little basing for the short-term time frames very likely to uh, be get another try back up towards 32 750 ish region we do see four hour stokes trying to cross back to the upside in fact they actually are right now and four hour rsi is giving us any sort of divergence calls is it or is it giving us any sort of divergence calls um actually this time frame is not going to work for that because our last heart lows right around here so actually it wouldn't even be available to begin with what about a 12 hour however yes we do in fact caretaker rsi already kind of denoting it as potential and it will be confirmed as soon as uh today's closure anywhere above last uh friday's closure at uh, 32 for uh, 420 great number right there uh very likely to produce that and i would be having a medium term target probably in the next couple of days back up to about 3280 uh, sorry 32 800 ish region and uh and continue on with the uh with the sideways consolidation at a high level likely implying continuation of new all-time highs uh, probably in the next drive let's actually see what it looks like on this chart over here i'm curious if it is actually trending from a trollinger band perspective and uh, let's see where is my where where is it there it is found you uh actually very very close right there not quite though but very fucking close Overall, however, I, you know, I do like a signature like this and uh, in any sort of price action back above 32,800 is going to be, you know, very much implying bullish continuation to new all time highs on, on top of this. Here's what momentum also to suggest as well. Actually, this is very interesting to hear or sorry. No, that's the wrong time frame. Uh, 12 hour Stokes or sorry, uh, weekly Stokes uh, kind of flip flopping around a little bit there, but that's OK. That's what you expect in your strong in your strong training moves. More importantly, weekly RSI again, basing in the bullish control zone. I do like this one for, for the situation long term, short term, uh, probably even a bounce implied here as well. Well, see what spy futures are doing as well. Same thing, actually. We see the same sort of uh, signatures, I believe, on 12 hour and daily. Yep. Uh, actually, no, uh, no, because we do have a bit of a lower low right there. Let's see what the daily has. Um, either, at, you know, at any rate, I actually do favor this one more or less. We even see the daily having a little bit of hidden bullish evidence, not something that you traditionally call, but caretaker RSI has actually been really interesting, kind of calling these ones that traditionally would not be, uh, would not qualify as such, but still playing them out. And in this case, I'd say any sort of a closure above, especially last Friday uh, high would 
would would denote continuation back up around the prior all-time high, somewhere around 3950-ish region. Short-term time frames very obviously already look like a higher low here, and I would be looking for this one to give another try. Yeah, about 3950-ish region as 4 hour stokes do point northwards. Actually, I believe I see a trend line back here as well. No, I do not. Sorry, that is my Jesus toast speaking to me here. But 4 hour RSI back above the exponential and more importantly rejecting the bearish control zone i do look at that as generally a good thing and very likely to try a little bit higher here see what nasdaq is doing as well and what do you fucking know as we spoke about on this morning's video we actually didn't get that next move down uh, around that 12.7 to 12.8 region however more importantly the general bias here was a bounce within that region and very likely another test back up towards thirteen thousand dollars plus here's the thing though this is actually pretty damn powerful right here any sort of a closure any sort of any sort of a closure at all above 13150 we'll call it i would be looking for continuation all the way back up to 13700 very likely very likely just makes a run towards the prior time high here as well i like the weekly here as well any sort of a any just any sort of a wick above last week high and yes i would be looking for essentially a retest of uh 136 13 7 ish region and that likely does beget continuation overall that very likely marks something of of note over here as hidden bullish evidence if i had to guess yeah guess guess what we actually made lower lows on rsi than even the higher low that uh that uh, that uh, that nasdaq was putting in way the fuck back on over here so that actually be that actually very likely can uh, uh confirm not just not just uh, not, uh, not not just a retest of the prior time high but probably new all time highs especially with weekly stokes having a bit of a bullish reset here now that should be denoted that there is a nice trend line coming in from the last two major lows in december 2018 that was when bitcoin was around three thousand uh actually no 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 sorry that that is that uh yes no that that is correct that uh, that was when bitcoin had down to about 3100 region and then again in march april of last year that was a coronavirus dump and we will be testing this trend line uh probably within two maybe three weeks and that's right around the edge of the bearish control zone so i do like that at the very least and that would you know again imply a little bit of continuation here uh probably even new all-time highs even the monthly looking good here based off the 10 simple i know that these things look crazy i know that everyone wants to call a major high on the stock market but at least for now it's kind of similar to bitcoin it's like yes this looks fucking crazy i totally agree with that but i'm not really getting any major reversal signals uh just yet so i'd still be looking for continuation to new uh probably new all-time highs into into april if i had to guess anyways uh gold are we still seeing the bounce play out? I still believe so. Yes, indeed. Monthly bouncing off the 21 expansion on average. Daily is a little bit more in limbo here, to be fair. Um, but overall, I still kind of run with the weekly on this one. Still looking for a bounce up somewhere around 1775, maybe even 1800, at which point I do think a decision will very likely be made. But overall on gold, I think whether you're bullish or bearish, it's kind of an easier call here to be looking for a bit of a bounce. Again, to you know, to those regions, that's where the real test does indeed come. So for now, I, you know, I'd, I'd be cautiously bullish, I suppose. But um, but once we get around there, you know, that's where <laughs> if the bears want to take back on over again, that's very likely where they do it from daily obviously has a uh, has a death cross and guess where the 55 is coming in around 1780 actually so it would be kind of a natural reversal area but i'd give it a chance first and foremost anyways um uh, let's go into like a very low term time from like a four hour actually four hour looks weak as fuck here to be fair uh four hour jewel given a bit of a soft sell signal right there or hotter or short signal to be fair um four hour four hour stokes kind of flipping around but nothing nothing too strong either which way you know i'm sure someone's going to call this like a rising wedge yeah it could it work out as a rising wedge eh, not really actually but i'm sure that people will call it anyways because that's just the that's just like the most notorious pattern for that what i could say though is that 1750 is going to be a big pivot on the full hour probably even on the hourly as well if i had to guess let's see yeah about on the hourly here too and anywhere above there especially on a closure and i'd be looking for that next momentous drive up to the 1780 maybe even 1800 target that's the point though where i would be a little bit cautious on this one um, anyways moving on to bitcoin so bitcoin did come back down tested the bottom side of this proverbial uh ascending triangle which still does keep the bula ish's hopes alive in the more short-term future of course higher term time frame nothing's changed there i feel i feel like i always need to kind of like reiterate this when i go around uh you know when, uh, when i talk about the short-term time frames however higher term time frames nothing's changed there daily weekly or maybe not the daily exactly but weekly bi-weekly monthly and quarterly all very fucking bullish don't want to go over that right now check out this morning's video if you want the more uh long long-term analysis of that or check out the long-term analysis playlist as that's going to be much more dedicated and directed towards that analysis as well anyways as it is right now on the four hour which does obviously represent more short-term time frames i would be looking at this trend line as still well more or less holding and more importantly as long as bitcoin is closing four hours above this last higher low at about fifty six thousand bucks i do look at this as a as an ascending triangle essentially a bullish reaccumulation formation uh first and foremost however bitcoin does break below this region that's going to be the first major warning flag that uh bitcoin very likely does come all the way down to maybe even fifty two thousand bucks before the next sort of uh, uh medium term bounce 
if you will. Now, of course, there would be bounces along the way short term 54, uh, six or sorry, 54, 500 around this last local low right here would be kind of an obvious area for a short term bounce, but extremely likely that would get sold into. I'd ultimately be looking for a move down somewhere around 52, maybe 52,500 potential continuation below there, but it would be, you know, but, but, uh, but very, very likely back down around there before I would be looking for a potential reversal once again on the short term timeframes. Again, higher term timeframes, very much unchanged. Nothing to, nothing to really talk about there. It's still more or less fine, uh, at least in the way that I look at things right now. Um, but as far as this goes here, what do we see as far as momentum also does go? We do see four hour stoves trying to, trying to, trying to, trying to get erect once again. However, you can see it's being fought back a little bit with peril here. So with that in mind, I mean, not really getting too much from that. In fact, in this case, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring back this indicator that we spoke about on this morning's video, the, the, uh, the reverse true strength indicator which Caretaker is actually made uh, freely available. It's actually even open, open source as well. If you want to go grab it, uh, I think I had a link on the, on the, in the description of this morning's video as well. And this is actually really interesting to me right here because we will see this obviously base around the zero read right here, which if you are unfamiliar with this, essentially, if you get a bullish signal when it's above the zero read, well, that is usually going to be pretty damn good and vice versa for below the signal line for bearish signals, but you don't want to be taking vice versa signals on the wrong side of the zero read. That's essentially what I'm saying. So with this right here, here, if we actually did see this next four hour deal to close above 58,400, which admittedly is pretty fucking far away from price action right now, uh, then that would increase that, that, uh, that would turn the momentum back up, especially on low volatility and also very likely imply a higher high above this little stutter step here on the extremely short term timeframes. And then that would very likely imply a retest somewhere back around the mid $59,000 region. Let's just call it 59,400. That is kind of like your lower high structure right here. And you know, would that still set it up for a potential breakout? Yes, very likely. It does as it's going to have greater implications with uh, setting up the 12 hour in the daily of which the 12 hour does have potential hidden bullish divergence that could play but still actually unconfirmed i still want to see it close above the 10 simple which it actually got rejected from on the last uh, on the last tick but momentum also is on the 12 hour are going to have a chance to cross up as well in the bullish control zone so it's like i want to see one uh, you know i i want to see like this domino effect happen before i really look for this next momentous drive to potential new all-time highs into the sixty-five thousand dollar region would be the next sort of medium term target and then sixty-nine thousand bucks again based off this morning's video just you know essentially uh looking at measure moves from this sending triangle and also this uh th this reaccumulation formation in the cup and handle that we saw from about 45,000 bucks to uh, 58,000 bucks. Um, both of them having respective targets towards the, the three spot 272 and, this, and the three spot 618. Uh, again, 65,000 bucks, 69,000 bucks. But again, I need to see these these conditions fulfilled. So I'd call I'd, I'd call a continuation of the upside based off that 59. Uh, yes, 59,400 closure on a four hour or any sort of a, any sort of a tick higher than what we saw on the 20th of March, which is basically 60,000 bucks. If one of those two things happens, yes, I'm essentially looking for, you know, new all time highs and a continuation phase here until that happens, though, still sideways, sideways, uh, si you know, sideways within a range is more or less the is, you know is, is you know is more or less the uh the, the, uh, the name of the game here obviously uh you know i know it doesn't really make for a sexy title but that is you know that is trading you know like 80 percent of the time more or less uh just kind of consolidating here so with that in mind i mean technically speaking it is it is holding right now yes but with the way that hvp is kind of postured here i do believe that we probably actually see this range break within the next 24 hours of price action if you are looking at this from a pattern perspective we become about 75 percent full right around here late on the 23rd early on the 24th that's for myself in eastern european time zone so perhaps that's a little bit just late or, or mid midday for you tomorrow if you're in the Western Hemisphere. But overall, I would be looking for a resolution extremely likely around that time. And again, to the upside, I mean, that's continuation of your time highs to the downside. That's, you know, very likely another, uh, well, <laughs> that'd be about a $5,000 move uh, from where we're currently at 57 all the way down to 52 500 ish regions where I'd be looking towards maybe even lower than that over time. But at least uh, at least I'd be looking for price action somewhere back down around there. So with all of that said, uh, you know, again, just more or less boring here, but uh, but I would keep a keen eye on this area right here, of course. And I do want to recall back to the sort of uh, narrative that we've been talking about over the last few days, in a set, or maybe even the last couple of weeks, really, where Bitcoin's more or less around its prior time high at, at about 60,000 bucks, we'll call it. And it really doesn't feel like there's all that much hype surrounding the market right now, in a way, with the NFT sector. Absolutely, yes. I mean, people are playing fucking $69 million for uh, JPEG, which is rather interesting. But hey, fair enough. You know, people are free to do whatever the fuck 
fuck they want to do with their money. Um, but I, I don't really feel I don't really feel like the same sort of exuberant irrationality uh, going on with uh, with Bitcoin as you typically expect around these like critical areas. So call me fucking crazy, but actually I would still remain a long term bullish on Bitcoin. Short term, you know, could that turn around? Absolutely yes. But uh, but the levels are very well clear and delineated. So at the end of the day, uh, I am just waiting around, waiting for the next signal. And with that said, I would like to wish you the best, best, and the happiest, the happiest. I am going to be signing off now. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care and until next time.